this video, we want to consider just a, another basic property of the uh, angular momentum, or really of cross products of vectors in general. Um, before we do, just to clarify from the last video, we had left off declaring that when we had a solid object that is rotating about this axis right here, this is point O, um, we said that the magnitude of its angular momentum was the magnitude of the moment of inertia about that point, and omega, that's the angular velocity. We may not have been real uh, clear about that when we were finishing up the last video. Remember how that came about, is that when you have uniform circular motion, where this is theta, and this is an arc length here of s, and this is radius r, then s equals r times theta. ds dt, that's the linear velocity. And that equals r d theta dt. And of course, that is the angular velocity omega, and that's what this is. And that's what we had, where we had left off in the uh, previous video. We want to emphasize that this is not a general formula. For the problems that we're going to start with, with the simple problems, this will work. When we get into more complicated situations, we see that this will break down, and in fact, that will take us into the a moment of inertia tensor. But those are a few videos away. Um, what we want to do in this video is consider the cross product, not just between um, the uh, position vector r and the linear momentum p, but just two vectors in general, say in three-dimensional space. We have, here is vector A with its components, and here is vector B with its components. We're going to take the cross product, so there are nine terms to consider. We'll have this term with this one, this one, and this one, and then this term with this one, this one, and this one, and so forth. If we go ahead and just try to grind it out, what kind of expression do we end up with? So to begin with, we have this cross this. So you have ai times bi. Then we have e sub i cross e sub i. Then we will have this cross this. So now we have a sub i, b sub j. And now we have e sub i cross e sub j. And then we will have this cross this. a sub i times b sub k, then e sub i cross e sub k. Those are the, the first three terms. Then continuing on, we will have this cross this. So we have this coefficient times this coefficient. Then we have e sub j cross e sub i. Then we have this cross this. So you have a sub j times b sub j. And then we have e sub j cross e sub j. Then we'll have this term cross this term. Now we have the coefficients a j times b k. And we have e sub j cross e sub k. And then finally, just to grind this through, we will have this cross this. Now we have a k times b sub i. And we have e sub k cross e sub i. And we have this cross this. Now we have a sub k times b sub j e k cross e j. And then finally, this cross this. That gives us a k cross b sub k and e sub k cross e sub k. And each of these, of course, are 0 here, here, and here. 
And then for the other terms, let's look at this diagram. Here we have e sub i, e sub j, e sub k. If we have e sub i cross e sub j, then when we apply the right hand rule, we have our fingers here, move this over to here. When we do that, the thumb points up. That gives us plus e k. If we have e j cross e k, now we're wrapping this is to go to here with our fingers. So when we do it, the thumb points back at us. That gives us a plus e sub i. Then if we have e sub k cross e sub i, now it's like this. The thumb was pointing, it's hard to show on the camera, the thumb was pointing in this direction. That is e sub j. And of course, if we had the reverse order here, that would be minus e k. The reverse order here gives us minus e i. The reverse order here would give us minus e j. And that's what we see right here then. e sub i cross e sub j, that's plus e sub k. Then e j cross e i, the reverse order, that's minus e sub k. And then we have e sub j cross e sub k, that's plus e i. Then the reverse order here, that gives us minus e i. And then here we have e sub k cross e sub i, that's plus e j. Then over here we have the reverse order, e i cross e k, that's minus e j. So when we consider it like that, and then we go ahead and collect the terms, this is the expression that we end up with. And then if we write this in determinant form, like this, and then go ahead and evaluate this determinant, it gives us that same expression. And that's how that is derived. You probably have seen it before, but we just thought we'd take a, a couple of minutes and just do um, a quick demonstration of that. Now what we're going to do in the next video is consider some of the basic properties of angular momentum and torque. And then once we do that, we'll be in a position where we can uh, start solving at least some simple problems. And the, uh, the playlist for the videos here in the Analytical Mechanic series, along with all the other playlists, that is featured at the website digital-university.org.